Hi, Tom Stewart here with Cleaning Business Today. I'm with my partner, Liz Trotter. Hello, Liz. Hello. And uh, it's Friday afternoon. Um, Friday afternoon of what seems to be a, a, a fairly long week. It's kind of weird that uh, I don't think I've been in the office this week. Um, so you would think that you really wouldn't feel like it. You've worked a whole lot. It's almost like taking a week off in some regards, you know? Yeah, and yeah, you'd think, but I'm much tireder. Much yeah. tireder. Hey, Rosemary. Hi, Rosemary. How are you? Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you, too. Um, so, you know, we've been pretty much on a daily basis. We say like a week's worth of stuff happens in a in a day. And uh, I don't really think that this uh, this day is a, is a, is a whole lot uh, different than, than the others. Um, I think that when we had uh, this call yesterday, at least the, 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 the story was, the official story was that uh, we were going to be able to apply for uh, the PPP uh, loans starting this morning. Although we had some good information that we shared that a lot of big banks said that they wouldn't be ready and wake up this morning. And sure enough, the big banks, no banks were really, really ready for that. They, um, some banks are taking the application information, but um, I talked to, to a friend of mine who um, like is an executive for, for, for one of the larger banks. And he said that the uh, portal that the banks enter that information into isn't even up yet. And they're being told it's going to be up and available by Monday. So any information that any of us are giving to our banks, they'll take it. But they're really just kind of sitting on it at the moment because uh, there's no uh, no way to, to, to enter that into the uh, NCAA portal. Sorry, Tom, I do this every time when I try to get up the page on my phone. Oh. I got to mute it. Is that me? That's you. I just little... like to have it on my phone so that I can respond to people. <laughs> With a little bit of a delay. Yeah, there is. There's a, a, a delay on the um, visuals, too. So I can't look at the phone or I get really confused. <laughs> Especially on Friday. It's been a really long week. <laughs> well, I love that Rosemary says she's getting lots done. That's awesome, Rosemary. Good for you. I know a lot of people are right now sort of spinning on not getting a lot done. <clears throat> so that's great that you're getting stuff done. What are you getting done? Let's see. And hi, Rena. Good to see you. Oh, Sarah is in the background there. Hey, Linda. Oh, I didn't see Linda earlier. There she is. Yeah. Ah, uh, so Tom, did you get any information on uh, telling it like it is around that six hundred bucks? Yeah. Um. There's. there's several i mean numerous websites and treatments and you know pretty much uh, pretty much the consensus from everything that we've been finding all suggests that the six hundred dollars is on top of other benefit that, that one that they're really getting from the state and uh i mean a number of them explicitly say in some cases they're going to be getting more money than what they would have been getting if they were working their, their regular job. Uh, the $600 is the way the, the law is written now is scheduled to uh, go away at the end of July. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess based on the best information we have, that's the, uh, that, that's the plan. To our knowledge, none of the funds are going out yet. So, yeah. you know, a lot of a lot of the stuff, uh, a lot of the stuff is 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 changing and and, and evolving. So, um, I guess it behooves us to go ahead and and, and work under the assumption that that's uh, that's the way that's going to be handled. That uh, the unemployment is going to be six hundred is going to be above and beyond whatever the the normal state would be. Well, and it makes sense to go with that because. Anything, any decisions we make with that, we can always back off of and not get in trouble. But if we plan on not having that, then we might make completely different decisions that would be weaker. Yep. Uh, yeah. um, that changes, changes things for sure, though. 
Does everybody have the uh, application information from uh, the SBA? I mean, there's a couple of uh, forms that uh, you're going to need to to complete for that. We can go ahead and put those um, up on our website, up on Cleaning Business Today. It does sound like you're busy, Rosemary. Good job. Sarah, don't worry. You're right. Next week's a new week, and I'm hearing that from a lot of people. Hey, Bridget. Oh, you guys have a form that looks like this or see this if you're you're, you're thinking about doing the, uh, the PPP. It's fairly straightforward. You need a couple of numbers, your average monthly payroll times two times the number of jobs. And down here, it shows you how, how you want to want to do that calculation. Answer a few questions. And there's a couple uh, pieces of supporting documentation that go in the instructions. I'll, I'll post all of this on our, our resource page on uh, cleaning business today on the coronavirus dash downloads page. If you don't have it, um, I had some people asking me a couple of questions, Tom. I didn't know if you would have the answer, but I said I will pass them on. Um, one is, do you have any ideas around who might not get approved for these loans? We've been talking about them as if everybody's going to get them. But if that was true, then there wouldn't be an approval process, right? It would just be an application. Right. Have you thought about that? Do you have any information? There's criteria for, for, for all of the programs. I guess from a, from a loan perspective, at a high level, you've got the uh, emergency disaster loan, which is kind of bundled with the what yesterday – and the days before it was called as the $10,000 grant. Now they've changed it to calling it the emergency loan. But if oh, you read I thought they were calling it an advance. It's not an advance anymore? It's uh, da, 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 da. I thought it was the advance on that loan. E on the e loan advance. Oh. If, you, if yeah. you click on it. They're not calling it grant anymore. Yeah, so now it's disaster, just an advance. Disaster loan advance. Like it's an advance on a loan as opposed to a grant. Yeah, but if you read here, might. the loan advance will not have to be repaid. So, okay. So. so, you know, it looks like it's still going to be a grant, but it's interesting because it said grant yesterday. Right. So you get in here to the to the eligibility for this, uh, and this is this is for the uh, emergency disaster relief and the uh, ten thousand dollar now advance, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but, but, but help overcome but, 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 program small businesses less than five hundred employees. I think uh, that pretty much fits uh, everybody on this call. Um, certain industries with more than 500, um, but <clears throat> we're under five, so we're good there. So it looks like at that criteria is fairly modestly eligible. That it? There's nothing that's going to disqualify anybody? I had somebody, um, the person I was talking to that was asking me about this, and what if I am routinely struggling in my business and you know bouncing checks and that kind of stuff? Will I be eligible? My initial thought was probably, but then I thought, oh, it's still a loan. Well, the more questions in the application process that can disqualify you. Mm -hmm. Um Examples of, you know, are we engaged in illegal activities? If you say yes, I would presume that would disqualify you. I would guess, yeah. 
you know, are you delinquent in child support, you know, as a, as a principal? So there's, I mean, several questions that they're asking, um, you know. Potential disqualifiers. Do we do, you know, is a third of our income coming from, you know, gambling? You know, so, but, you know, are we, do we do, are we engaged in, in lobbying? Is this a, a business? So I would think that, you know, everybody on this call would, you know, answer all those questions in the negative, wouldn't check any of those. So I, I, I guess the, the practical answer to, to, to the question is, I think almost all of us qualify. Yeah, sounds, sounds like from what you're saying that the qualifiers are pretty, pretty, pretty uh, out there. For it's, us. A low, it's, a, it's a low bar. It's a low bar yeah. to qualify. Okay, that's great. Uh, let's see. I have another question and I don't remember where I watched it. Hey, Krista, uh, what does uh, Rosemary say? Okay, her strategy is that she's waiting until after the stay at home gets lifted. Hopefully she's hoping that'll happen. Hey, Heather, by May 1st. Um, if you get the $10,000 grant and PPP, it looks like the grant will not be free unless you can qualify or qualify to forgive the whole joint dollar amount. Is that right? I don't understand that. I'm sorry. Tom, you have to speak to that. I, 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 don't, I don't know. I'll, I'll go back to uh, their website. And da, 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 where did we go? It just says here the loan advance will not have to be repaid. It doesn't have any, you know, like on the PPP, for instance, and even the EIDL, it, it says some of this may not have to be repaid if certain, you know, conditions are met and they, you know, rattle them off in terms of having all your, your people back to work by the end of June and whatnot. This doesn't here say anything other than, you don't have to repay it. And the way it was initially presented at the beginning of the week was it was a grant. And by definition, grants don't have to pay, be paid back. I find it odd that they don't call it a grant anymore. Yeah, that's but, disconcerting. Why would they change that, do you think? What would be the reasoning? You know, maybe there's some obscure law or something that would preclude them from doing it if they called it a grant, but if they change the, 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 the title of it, but still treat it like a grant, they can get what it is that they int originally intended to do. I, you know, I'm just guessing. I have no idea. But, but when I saw that they weren't calling the grant anymore, I was concerned too. It's like, Oh, great. Now, you know, they're, they're going to want me to pay that back too. Of course, <laughs> you know, I'm saying that like that money's already in the bank. I know. That's what I was just thinking, Tom. Did you already get your ten grand? No. <laughs> that the government owed you that you shouldn't have to pay back. <laughs> I checked. I checked. Um, mm -hmm. We were on a call yesterday, and we, I, you know, we, we had somebody on the call that said that they actually had the patience to stay on the phone long enough to to speak with somebody at the SB, and they told they, they were told that it might be three weeks. Um, but that's anecdotal. I mean, I haven't seen anything official. On, on, on that, but um, you know, we. Uh, well, I looked. I looked a little bit more, Tom, and what I saw was that it was three weeks. I mean, three days after approval. So, so that made sense to me. I was like, oh, okay, so three days after approval, not three days after applying. So. And. and uh, have you seen anything that, that speaks to when we would expect approval? I have not, but I can imagine it might take a little bit of time with all of these people applying <laughs> all at the same time. I did see that you can expect one to two more weeks. Let me see. I have this one up, actually. Um, one or two more weeks for your $1,200 um, Whatever, that $1,200. Economic stimulus check. Yeah, 
the stimulus check. But so, uh, a minimum of a week up to two. Is that assuming direct deposit only? That, yeah, one to two weeks for direct deposit and up to five weeks for paper check. Well, that's good because we saw stuff yesterday that said that the paper check could be anywhere from eight to 13. Eight to 13. Yeah. Right. So I, let, let me see where I'm getting this information, where it's coming from. This is being reported on in our local newspaper where they're getting the information. It's just talking about state officials in here. It's just coming. Uh, contact your local congressional office. Yeah, so not much. It says like the Treasury Secretary said that the cash payments would begin within two weeks, according to uh, the Washington Post. Yeah. The problem is... With all good intent, you know, they're let me let me let me let me preface this by saying what it is that they're trying to do here is really ambitious. This is once again we'll use the term unprecedented. We've never been in a situation where the federal government has been in a position where they've tried to push out this much aid, this much money, this quickly. Give you yeah. give you give you perspective. The uh, Three hundred and forty-nine billion dollar PPP portion of this, which is, you know, handled through the SBA and the local banks are, are, are processing that. If you go back over the last six years combined and add up every loan that the SBA has made under every program that it's had, it's less than eight hundred billion. It's like seven hundred and ninety-three billion to be exact. So this is almost half of what they've done over the last six years, they're trying to do immediately here within a matter of days. Yeah. So they're trying to do, put it, you know, they're trying to do three years worth of work in a matter of, 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 of days. So, you know, I guess we should give them a little bit of a uh, little bit of a break if they're, they're not the their targets, but uh -huh. Washington is also saying that you can expect your $600 uh, Fed check for unemployment to begin dispersing by the 18th. That's the ex expected date right now. So this, so, this actually was a, a decent article, had a lot of dates in it. For, for planning purposes, I think we're learning that whenever we get these dates, we should assume that is best case. Yeah. Then it might happen. Who knows? But don't don't bet the ranch on it. Don't be, don't be making another financial decision saying I can go ahead and I can spend the money I have now because by the 18th, I'll have that extra $600. Uh, let's see. What is Linda saying? <clears throat> this is what my accountant tax man sent. If you take the $10,000 immediate cash advance, the amount of the PPP loan that could be forgiven will be reduced by the $10,000 advance. I think I had heard that they would roll together also. And so that makes sense to me. It sounds like the same information I've been hearing. Just stated a little bit differently, maybe. Ohio unemployment struggling with the volume. Yeah. I, I, who? Texas. No, New York. Somebody was saying today that uh, New York's unemployment fund is almost bankrupt <laughs> already. So... Hmm. I got no money. I mean, make makes sense to me. Uh, if you remember yesterday, we were talking about the number of unemployment claims shot up to like 6.6 .6 million the week, you know, last week, which is twice as was the week before. And the week before was almost five times as high as it ever has been in the history since you know, they've been tracking such stuff. I saw some numbers that were breaking those unemployment claims down by state and by far than I don't remember the exact numbers, but um, California was several times higher than the next highest state. Mm -hmm. but New York was 
I don't know, those are the top 10, probably the top five, but it was a lot lower than what you would expect it to be with the population that it had. And part, yeah. of, the, uh, part of the explanation for that is they just don't have the resources to even count and process. So um, that makes sense. You layer that in over the fact that you know they're they're out of money. That it's going to be a lot of a lot of tough uh, tough problems that are going to need to be solved here over the days and weeks ahead. Yeah. Have we talked much about the uh, tax credit program as opposed to PPP, and if one is worth more or, or, or better than the other? Nope, we said we're going to try and talk about it in the next couple of days, so okay. makes good sense. We're uh, playing around with a spreadsheet. We want to build a calculator that kind of help us plug in numbers to see if, if one is, is better than the other. And I'm going to try to see if we can can get that done over the weekend. If so, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll share it Monday. Um, but you know, those are two separate programs. You can't do both. If you do PPP, you can't do the tax credits. If you do the tax credits, you can't do PPP. PPP, basically, once you get the funds, you've got eight weeks after that that you can write off 100% of your payroll up to the two and a half times the, the payroll amount that uh, was there, assuming that you meet the whole criteria that you've got your workforce back up to full strength by the end of June. And if not, then it's prorated down by some amount. So in order to make that work rationally or, you know, economically, logically, you want to make sure that you're cleaning stuff and are getting paid for it before you get that loan. Because the minute you close on that loan, you're on the clock for those next eight weeks. So like if you're shut down because of stay at home orders and stuff like that, <clears throat> and you get that loan you're really going to be limited as to what you can do with it because you're not really having any material payroll. And the idea of bringing everybody back and just paying them for not generating revenue is kind of a risky deal because if for whatever reason you don't get your payroll back up to the number that it needs to be by, by the end of June, you're going to have to pay. That's going to be a loan you're going to have to pay back. In two years two years the interest rates relatively low yesterday we thought it was a half a percent the went up, went up again now went up to one percent the regional bank said they would lose money on a half a percent so they bumped it up to one but still really you know that's immaterial but paying it back in two years is is kind of kind of hefty um the the tax credit program is kind of interesting it's uh basically designed to offset your payroll taxes, the social security and and, and, and and those type things. And you apply for it at the end of the quarter. And the way it appears to be written is if you have more credits than what you had a liability for your, 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 your payroll um, withholdings, the, the difference would be considered an overpayment and you would be reimbursed for it, like getting cash back. So the way that we're reading it, the way our CPA is reading it is it's as good as cash and you get it back at the end of every quarter. And that program starts back somewhere in the middle of March. So you can even go back and get some tax credits for, for first quarter all the way through the, the end of December of this year. Now it's for 50 percent of the qualifying payroll and the qualifying payroll is capped at ten thousand dollars per person. So it would be $5,000 per person maximum credit that, that, that you'd be able to get. And this is where it gets a little bit confusing. So you have to do some math and say, well, how much at the, at the date that I think that I might get my PPP loan, what would my payroll look like for, for that eight week, eight week period? And how much of that would I be able to write off assuming I could meet the requirement versus how much of that 50% of up to $10,000 of already payroll that I could accrue over the course of the year would that add up to be? And there's a little bit of a tax thing you have to give back on the tax credits. And there's again, we'll build a spreadsheet that we can look all look at all that next week. But net net, if you think that you're gonna be starting off slow or if you're gonna be shut down for a while, you're not gonna be busy till second half of the year, you might be better off with the 
the tax credits and then PPP. And that's the spreadsheet that you're going to work on over this weekend, Tom. Is that right? Yep. Yep. That's so the plan. People figure out. Yeah, that sounds yep. great. You want to see what Christiane has um, is posting here? It's it's basically the the dilemma that everybody's dealing with, right? And so she's basically just put it down in in words here. Still getting calls from clients, but our employees don't want to go out. They're scared of getting the virus. Some are getting paid sick leave. Some are getting paid a sick leave due to childcare, but others aren't. We allowed them to use their PTO without notice, but some have already used it all up. They've heard that they can get $600 a week through the IRS and would like us to lay them off. I realize the PPP will help us retain them, but not sure how to handle between then and now. Not even sure we'll end up getting the funds. All that's uh, all that's rational. Yeah, <laughs> what we're trying what to we're figure all thinking. out. And everybody has like different twists and versions based on how scared your people are, how many clients need to be cleaned or want to be cleaned, and um, how, whether or not you have a lot of uh, a, a large chunk of your workforce has children that are no longer in school is going to be a a deciding factor there, whether or not your state is considering you an essential service is, changes that whole that whole scenario too. Uh, Sarah says, I thought the PPP was to keep you going, but the tax credit was to help cover FMLA. It doesn't seem like the PPP would cover if lots of employees take advantage of the 12 weeks off. The 12 weeks off, are she talking about the six? Are you talking about the 16 weeks of child fed unemployment or oh, the 12, the 12 weeks of childcare? Yeah. Gotcha. The uh, paid FMLA, which has this new acronym FSCRA, yeah. FSCRA, yeah, families first. I mean, theoretically, we're going to get that money back, and but that's that's separate than the. I forget what the what the tax credit program is is called. Top of my head, but it has something to do with like creating jobs. Create, you know, if you're working people between the beginning of, or middle of March till to the end of the year and not doing PPP, you can get tax credits for 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 you know those people working as well for half of their salary. And you know, there's caps and some other stuff, but for most of us, you know, we don't have any any technicians that are making over a hundred thousand a year, so that's not a concern. And you get them up to, uh, you know, up to like $10,000 of the payroll. You get half of that five grand, um, which is different than the paid FMLA or the, or the paid sick time. If we wind up paying any of that. And I guess there's more and more rules coming out of that. And I don't have any of that top of hand. But in some cases, you can get exempt from from some of that. Do, do you know any of those particulars, Liz? Um, the last thing I read is the same thing that we, the last thing I received is the same information that we've gotten before is that you still using the word may be exempt. If you're less than 50, um, um, you have less than 50 employees and then like, what were the criteria? Sorry. I, I have, um, I absolutely have information fatigue going on so much information. I can look that up though I do have sorry Sarah I'm with you oh man so much to learn Sarah it is I mean I've, I've been lamenting that I just feel like my head's been put in a blender it's just so much to hey it's so much to keep up with and then you like spend time reading like all of the, the rules of the documentation and what you know the SBA is telling us and what the Treasury is telling us and then you wake up the next morning and it, you're, it's a completely different website. <laughs> it's like, why did I even bother? So Somebody was saying that the uh, PPP has changed already, but I guess that wouldn't matter because it's not going out actually till Monday anyway. Yeah, it would, it's, it's, it's funny. I, it would, I, I fully expect that whatever assumptions we're working with now for PPP, some of them will be different by Monday morning. Okay, Sarah, she was good to go on keeping up until the tax credit part kicked in. She's like, okay, I got it. 
And then the tax credit is like oh, a whole new layer to lay on top of everything else. Uh, I do think that Tom's spreadsheets can help us a lot on Monday, Sarah, for that. I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat. I'm gonna go to cleaning business today because I think we already have a link there talking about the tax credits. Maybe it'll help if I share my screen. Yeah, I'm not thinking that's cheating. I'm thinking that's good business move right there. <laughs> so go to where the stuff is. And the tax credit is the IRS part of it. Employer retention credit under the CARES Act. So go to that link and read this. And this is, uh, this basically gives you the skinny as to, to what you, you need to, to, to know about the tax credit. And the important thing to realize is if you go this route and take advantage of these tax credits, which in essence is, 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 is money that you get at the end of every quarter, um, you cannot do the PPE, but PPP. <laughs> you definitely want to continue doing the PPE. PPE. <laughs> the triple, the triple P. You know, yeah. I was talking to my CPA and he was referring to it as the triple P. Okay. The PPP. Anyway. Um, I'm not, a hundred, yeah. I'm not, I'm not even a hundred percent sure on this. I do believe that you can apply for the PPP and once, you know, they process it, you can, you can decide not to take it. Don't take, I mean, I can't even guarantee that at the moment, but that's, that's an assumption I'm working under. So if you're not sure which way you want to go, I don't think that you have anything to lose by applying then, but then you just need to make the decision. You know, once it's approved, you need to decide, which one of these ways you want to go. If you accept that loan, you won't be able to do, do the tax credits. And uh, another consideration there is I know a lot of people are applying for the PPP because they're worried that the monies are going to run out. What is it? 358 billion. Is that right, Tom? 349 billion. Thank you. 4958. Aren't those the same number? <laughs> okay, 349 billion. So they're worried that that is going to run out. Um, but on the flip side, I, I, a lot of people are also thinking that they're going to throw more money at that. If they if they run out, more money will be thrown at it. But if more money doesn't get thrown at it, there's another option. Yeah, you you then will definitely want to take take this option. Um, Rosemary was saying potentially our stay at home order could go into June. That would push us against the June thirtieth eight week criteria. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's 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 already assuming though that before the eight week period that you're able to um, use the you know blow up the payroll. That can go past that June thirtieth period. It doesn't, you don't have to have that eight weeks all jammed in before June 30th, but you do have to do your employment numbers need to be, you know, close to full employment. You can get them by June 30th in order to be able to write it all off. It's going to be tough, though, if the stay at home order is running till June 15th, you know, getting fully staffed by June 30th. You know, and who knows, even it's going to be by June 15th. So. And all of that kind of leans towards making the, uh, the the tax credit program for some of us maybe making more sense. Yeah. Now there is criteria for the tax credit program that I should probably show you because we're not even 100% sure how all of this is going to be. Um, you know, Tom, I'm thinking that if you could just make a list of the things that you are 100% sure of, that's going to be a very short list. Yeah, I was going to show you that this is that list. You see there's nothing on it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> blank page, blank page. Uh, but there's two things here. The one at the bottom says a significant uh, decline in gross receipts during the uh, calendar quarter. Basically, that's 
50 per, down below they they describe that's a 50 percent drop in, in 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 income from either the prior year quarter or the prior quarter i think they let you do both of those but that's a pretty hefty number you might not be at that point i hope you aren't but the other one which i think more of us might be able to uh to to, to use as the criteria is fully or partially suspended operations uh, due to uh, some order from an appropriate governmental authority, limiting commerce, travel, blah, 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 blah. That, you know, if you could say that, well, the governor entered a, you know, issued a stay at home program. And since we do house cleaning, you know, most of our, you know, clients, uh, you know, declined to use this. You could even say that, you know, you took the position, if you, if you closed completely that, or even partially closed that, Somehow you should be able to use that to, to, to rationalize. I talked to my CPA about that today, and you know, there's no guarantees any of this here, but he felt that, that, that we would have a really strong argument in any, any community that would have a stay-at-home order that, that that would you know, at least be a partial suspension of our operation. Yeah, makes sense. And... I mean, one thing that we can be pretty sure of is that the government is trying to help us. The government does want us to succeed. It's not trying to, it's not, and I'm not saying 100% Tom, but I'm pretty, pretty sure, sure. You're pretty sure. Sure that the government is trying to protect small businesses. So, I think so. I think so. Yeah, I think so too. And so if that's true, then uh, sometimes you know you just gotta go on faith. So, okay, we don't know exactly how it's going to work out, but going to have some confidence and some faith that it is going to work out and uh, move forward in that mindset with some confidence around that idea that, okay, the world is not conspiring against me, the world is conspiring for me and so, I'm going to go with, go with some hope there. That's not always a great move, but I think that in this case it is. Also, we, we do have the, uh, what's the saying that you always use, Tom, that we have the protection of the masses, I think. Yeah, we're, protected, we're protected by the masters. You know, if we're the majority, you know, if, 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 if you're an outlier, if you got a problem it's, that nobody else has, then you're kind of on your own. But if everybody has the same problem, it's kind of hard for the government or anybody else to kind of throw everybody under the bus because then there's nobody left, right? Yeah. Usually they, they wind up, you know, writing a law to protect the masses. And this is you know, usually when you're in, in small business, as a small business owner, you, you don't, that's not where you are, but this is one of those rare occasions where it's actually working to our advantage. How did your camera come? I have no idea. Oh, there you go. You're back. Uh, Rosemary is saying that seems contradictory with the $600 unemployment and the FMLA changes. Okay. So this payroll tax credit for FMLA is that what she's talking about? Well, she's talking about that doesn't seem like it. At least I, mean, I think I think where she's coming from is that doesn't seem like it. They were really looking out after us as small businesses oh. with those changes. Uh, I'll okay. give you that, Rosemary. Yeah, it's, I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have necessarily written the the rule that way, but you know, there are a lot of political interests that all needed to be satisfied. I mean, you know, the, the Senate passed this bill unanimously, and I think maybe the House did too, if I'm not mistaken, or, you know, it was almost, if it's not complete. So, you know, both sides of the, the, the aisle needed to get, you know, their stuff there, and, um, you know, they want to make sure that, that everybody feels like they're getting a fair shake this time, because back in 08, with the uh, TARP program and all the bailouts, it looked like it, that was for the big banks and for, for Wall Street and everybody else was was basically left with nothing. And what they're doing this time certainly looks like that, um, you know, they're trying to take care of everybody. Um, yeah, except not, for Trump. Well. <laughs> I, I just like 
that they actually wrote it in that not he and none of his holdings are eligible. I thought that was interesting. Okay, so let's see. Christiane says, sounds like the PPP was to offset that, but the only thing that is sure at the moment is the uh, unemployment of $600 per week. Insure is basically how we read it as it's you know being written and applied today. <laughs> Things can change by Monday. So just look at how many times the interest rate has changed for the PPP in one week, right? It started out at 4%, went down to a half a percent, back up to 1%. So, I mean, everything is shifting and changing. Uh, yeah. I think the only, right now, the only thing that you really want to bank on is that there will be some changes. You know, I mean, Again, talking to, to my, my banking contacts uh, earlier today, they think they've got most of the regs kind of figured out. One of the big sticking points with the PPP was that there was a stipulation that if a bank loaned to a company that was committing fraud or was laundering money, then the SBA wouldn't bank it, it wouldn't back it. The bank would basically be left holding the bag on it. And since they're being asked to process these loans with relatively no due diligence because they want to get the money out there fast, they don't really don't even know who they're loaning the money to. So if they were going to be responsible for that, it was going to slow the whole process down. Yeah. So supposedly the, the, you know, FBA is telling them, just go ahead and loan the money. We're good for it. Even if you screw up and loan it to the wrong person, but you know, this is all happening so fast that I am sure that, you know, six months, a year, two years down the road, there's going to be a lot of fuzzy memories and just, you know, I don't know. I don't know who's going to win and who's going to lose on this, but it's going to be interesting. <clears throat> well, anything else going on? Uh, looks like everybody's kind of getting a handle on things and, maybe making some decisions about direction and well, where they're going next week. Everybody feel good about where you're going to be next week, what you're doing. You know, when, when we started doing these programs, which I guess we've been doing this for a couple of weeks, a few weeks now. Does it matter? Yeah. Three. The thinking, the thinking was that right now this is a financial exercise. We need to get our, you know, debt, you know, squared away and get as much of that deferred as we can and get as much bank financing and, you know, SBA and federal help. And, you know, I'm kind of surprised that we're still here having that discussion. I would have thought, you know, several weeks ago that we would have kind of figured all of this out and we've moved on to something else, but you know, the rules keep changing. So, Oh, that smells, that looks like that smells good. Oh my gosh. I can't even stand it. I keep forgetting that I'm like on camera and I'm like, Oh, it smells <laughs> <good."> <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite smelly flower. It's freesia. Is that There's, for your birthday? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I love them. Oh. I got a cookie. Yeah, you got more than a cookie. You just remembered the cookie the most because you liked it the best. Oh, well, like good for that. you, Bridget. You're feeling comfy. What, Tom? Actually, what? <laughs> you didn't like your cookie? It wasn't good? No, my cookie was good. It still is good. It's there. Is it one of those big, huge cookies? They take a, they take a, just a cookie sheet and kind of rolled out a bunch of dough and kind of made a, yeah, made, made a, one big cookie and like a pie yeah. cookie. I got a picture somewhere. They actually do a coronavirus on it. <laughs> nice. It's the corona birthday. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Hey Bridget, I'm with you. Next week might change, right? Oh, Tom, I do have another question. Remember, I said I had a couple of questions from people. Um, the other question was uh, around 
Oh, that's actually nice. That's a sheet cake cookie. That's really oh. nice. That, they did a good job. That looks yeah. good. It was. It still is, actually. Wait, what's left yeah. of it? I'm it's actually really well done. I'm sorry. I digress. What, do we have a question? Oh, yeah. My question was, um, do you have any thoughts? And I know that you are not an attorney, and, and so you don't know the legality here. But do you have any thoughts on responsibility for companies that are open and if their employees were to contract the coronavirus, like who should they tell? What should they, you know, who are they legally responsible to? Uh, same thing, um, you know, in my company, I just told you, we had uh, a client who tested positive for, for the virus. Um, and on the call that I was on when we were talking about these things earlier, uh, the consensus was, hey, get your people tested and um, get either a positive or a negative test and then move forward from there. Um, but I was wondering, we were talking about, I wonder if there's any type, type of legality there. Do you have any idea? Suspicion is that there could be, as time goes on, there, 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 there may be. Um, this is all imparted waters. Yeah. Traditionally, you know, if I go to work and this person sitting next to me has the flu, and if I catch the flu, that's just kind of the way it works, and there's no liability. But coronavirus is such a big thing that we really don't know how that's going to work. So, yeah. you know, if you go to Mrs. Jones's house and Mrs. Jones has a cold and you wind up with a cold two days later, is it some issue between you and Mrs. Jones? No, you just caught a cold. That's what happens. So yeah. we don't know how all that's going to go down with the coronavirus. Um, so, One more thing. Yeah. Throw it, throw it on the list. Um, you know, the golden rule, though, sometimes, you know, I find useful when it comes to stuff like this. You know, what would what would I want to happen if 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 I was the cleaning technician and went into Mrs. Jones's house and Mrs. Jones had, you know, found out two days later that, that, that she had coronavirus? You know, what would I want? You know, what I, 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 I yeah. you know, just want to know. Or conversely, if, you know, somebody came and cleaned my house and two days later they found out they had coronavirus as a client, I would hope that that, that, that somebody would, 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 would tell. Inform you. Uh, so, you know, that would, that, when it, when it comes to those questions, I'm not sure what the legality is. Traditionally, there has never been any liability there. How that might change. You know, I suspect it's going to start with people suing the cruise lines, the cruise ships, with all the people that got, you know, sick on those. And that's going to set some precedent. And, you know, some attorney is going to pick that and try to use that case law to apply to. And who knows where that's yeah. going to go. Well, it, it goes to sort of a little bit of what Linda was talking about. Uh, I'm wondering if these types of things are going to change you know, after, after the coronavirus, all this it sort of blows away a little bit. Are we going to have to be wearing PPE on a regular basis so that our people don't get sick, so that we're not liable or so that we're not passing anything on? How could that play out? No, I don't know. And Linda wants to know, what is a good place for a training course for my staff to address the new normal after we go back to work? That's a good question. Um, and, and what is that training going to look like? And I mean, one of, one of my favorite programs is, you know, the one that, that, you know, we developed with, you know, HCT and HCT is a very broad, broad program, house cleaning technician certification program. Um, but there's certain parts of that, that, that certainly, uh, specifically address, you know, the, the chain of infection and how cleaning breaks that, you know, breaks that chain and, you know, what, the different types of uh, pathogens are and, 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 and how we, uh, we, we neutralize them. Um, I don't know if there's really a, a great course out there right now specifically for house cleaning companies to deal with all of the science. We're going to have to train more to science than what we traditionally have in the past in order to really 
deal responsibly with the coronavirus and and and, and cleaning in a, in, a, in a world where you know we've got you know these types of of of, of pandemic type diseases and more and more the belief is that you know we're going to be seeing more of this as time goes on because we're just packed more densely and we travel around more and we better, we better get ready for this in, in, in the long haul. We got we got to understand the science behind the cleaning, and so we're not just doing it, but we understand why we're doing it and why what we're doing has efficacy and why 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 it works. Um, what do you think, Liz? I mean, do we need a program that we don't have? Uh, I I think so. I think that there needs to be some type of a training course. I was going to ask you about also um, the ISSA training course that they're launching on Monday. The one, what is it? The GBAC for $49. Do you know anything about that? I haven't seen the syllabus yet. So I guess it depends upon, you know, they have good work and they're, and they, they, they're, the stuff they do is founded in science. So whatever it is, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's a quality program. Um, I've seen some of their stuff and it's focused on like forensic cleaning, the biohazard deep cleaning. And I know they have programs that will teach you, you know, how to put on a Tyvek suit and how to make sure you're, you know, powered respirator is working properly, you know, don and doff all your, you know, uh, equipment properly and make sure that you've got negative airflow. So the germs aren't you know, leaving your workspace. And it's all really, you know, great if you're going into some infected place and trying to wipe out Ebola or coronavirus. But, um, I'm not sure how practical that is for your typical house cleaning company. Yeah. I suspect there's a bit for useful information there, but you know, we're going to be cleaning homes for a long time after this initial shutdown is over of, of, of our economy. And we're not going to be wearing Tyvek suits and respirators when we go in and do our you know, bi-weekly cleaning in Mrs. Jones's house. However, yeah. we are going to be cleaning it with, 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 with hygienic cleaning and, and making sure that we're doing a good job of sanitizing all the high touch surfaces. And we're gonna be cleaning it with a higher purpose and a, and a different mindset than, than what we have been doing it traditionally. Cherry says she wants training also. Um, I, I think that that really speaks to what's going on though, Tom. Uh, people want training. <laughs> like Cherry says, I want training. and. I think they're just kind of feeling like I just need more knowledge. I need more information. I need, I need whatever's out there. So a lot of people I know are taking whatever they can find. I'll take anything. If it is, you know, how to, how to be fully suited up in full PPE gear so that I can do full de decontamination. Okay. Then that's what I'll take. If that's what's out there, what, what are options? Yeah, and you'll, you'll learn stuff from that that you can apply to your biweekly maintenance cleaning of Mrs. Jones's house. You're not going to wear a top of suit to do it, but you'll understand more about, you know, what pathogens are and the different types and how to neutralize them and what a high touch, you know, surface is. And you'll learn stuff. So learning stuff is always good. So, <laughs> Uh, but I haven't seen it. Wait, is that is that class going to be available next week? On Monday. Yeah. Um, this is, if you go to Facebook, Tom, it's on the ARCSI Residential Cleaning Discussion Group. And uh, apparently Debbie is putting on a course. I'm not sure if there are two. It sounds like there are two different courses. Um, and then there's a webinar, a telemedicine webinar. Have you heard about that? Um, essentially virtual medicine and this is a benefit that your employees would truly value don't know about that that's a different type of training um, but Kelly Jones is the one asking about hi can someone confirm if there's a coronavirus certification course being offered by ISSA on April 9th or if it's just a webinar 
And then she says, Debbie Sardone is also offering a similar course. I need to decide the best route to take at this time. And Aaron's the one that responds with, ISSA is launching their certification course on Monday um, from GBAC. Uh, members will be able to get the certification course for $49. Um, and she says, I believe the course Debbie is offering is the one that ISSA is producing with GBAC. So I don't know. That sounds repetitive there. So I'm not sure exactly what's being said. I, apparently, there's another one, maybe Debbie's course. Is to a hundred dollars more with it with Debbie? I don't know. It's confusing still. Might be a good conversation, Tom, for a call for one of the Facebook lives. Yeah. What are some of the resources and what are the different trainings that are out there? What's going to be valuable for us in our um, in our roles as house cleaning business owners? I'm glad this came up. I was going here and somehow I, I, you know, it's easy for me to get sidetracked. Um, we started doing this. It was all about finances and getting our financial house in order. The thinking was by the time we got to this point that we would already have that in the rear view mirror. And now's the time to really talking about how we're going to be doing business moving forward. And a big part of that is we all need to become more informed on, you know, what are pathogens and what is our responsibility as a professional cleaning company to, to, you know, mitigate them in a responsible way. And how do we do hygienic cleaning and sanitizing, disinfecting the proper tools and equipment and smelling flowers and all that really. <laughs> they smell so strong. I keep pulling them. I'm so sorry, Tom. They're so strong. I'm putting them out of my, out of my hands reach. <laughs> But yeah, we need, we, need, we need training. We need to, and you know, we're looking at that in Castle Keepers and we're making plans. We're, you know, we're, 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 we're primarily shut down, but we've got some people on our staff and we're going to be doing some serious training over the next couple of weeks here. Um, if we had some type of program during the day where we're doing stuff like that, would that be, you know, I guess, I guess we could do it for whoever wanted to sit in on it, you know? Um, what, what kind of charge are you thinking of, Tom, for a program like that? I don't think I don't think we would. I don't know. I, you know, I'll, I'll sit in on free training. <laughs> well, I know I'm going to help develop it, but I'll also sit in on it. Yeah, no, it, I don't know. It's just it's a kind of like, there's a lot of different schools of thought on this, and we're we, we got you got the rest of our lives to make some money, but at the moment, I think that we just need to help each other, you know get to a better place and, 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 and do everything we can to, to help. And, you know, we'll, we'll make money another day. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, we don't, we, we, all, we, all need, we, all, we, we all need food and shelter. So let's, let's, let's just start with that. But once we get to that point, let's, uh, let's just try to take care of each other. And if we can all get to, to someplace better together, then we can, can start making money again. Right. Well, things are so different right now. I could really, I'm really grateful that, you know, our industry is so good at pulling together and helping each other and sharing resources. I, I feel really blessed to be part of, of this industry because I think we do this better than most for sure. A uh, Tom reminder, <clears throat> three o'clock time to put up your, 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 your information. And then um, if anybody has uh, a piece of gossip or information that they've heard and they're not really sure, let's get Tom to tell it like it is on Monday about something. Anybody have anything? If not, I always have something. I listen to too many people talking about too many things. Yeah, Liz, I mean, you're the person who teaches the program on how to stop gossip. How come you always have all the good gossip? This is this is how I stop it. I go I go somewhere and I get find a credible source and this is it. Believe this. Stop talking about all that other dumb. <laughs> Cleaningbusinesstoday.com. Um, over here, this is where you subscribe. If you haven't, uh, I encourage you to do so. You'll you'll be on our uh, mailing list. You'll get our newsletters with all our updates. Um, if you go to forward slash coronavirus dash downloads, that's where 
you'll get all of our good download stuff and, and other resources uh, specifically for um, you know, what we're doing here for COVID-19. I'll um, take that link and hide that and I'll put that there. Bang. Wow. Are we done for the week? I hope so, Tom. I'm beat. Yeah. I'm ready for the weekend to begin and start this whole craziness next week again. Who knows what they'll come out with over the weekend, right? Yeah. But you know, I think I think that we all feel like we've got a lot of work we need to do this weekend. And you know, <laughs> I mean, it'll feel it's Saturday, so at least we'll feel different, even though I haven't been going to work. It does feel different. I don't mind. Uh, I feel like working on Saturday and Sunday is easier. It's less pressure. And it's, plus I can stretch my workout for 12 hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 bonus, it's bonus time. Yeah. Well, thank you, Sarah. You have a good weekend, too. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Take care Not of yourself this weekend. Relax a little bit. Get some rest. We'll uh, we'll be back here Monday at uh, at five. Okay. What's the name of the show we're supposed to be watching, Tom? Tiger. Oh, Tiger, Tiger King. King. Watch the last episode last night. It's uh, you know it's a dumpster fire, but you <laughs> you you watch those when you want to cross them, right? So that's right. <laughs> you want to feel better. Yeah. Thanks, Rosemary. We appreciate you guys too. Thanks Talk so to y'all later. Bye bye. Bye bye.